Hello and welcome to the How do I synchronize database schema using upgrade code units in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2015. My name is Jekoslav Babic, I'm a Microsoft Dynamics NAV MVP and I have created this video for you in collaboration with Microsoft and Platan, a Microsoft Dynamics training center from Belgium. At the end of this video we'll have an upgrade code unit that automates the schema synchronization process to handle conflicting schema changes. The objective of this video is to explain the upgrade code units and how they are used in the schema synchronization process, then to develop a table sync setup function to instruct Microsoft Dynamics NAV how to handle conflicting database schema changes, and finally to develop an upgrade function to complete the schema synchronization process. I will do this in five steps. In the first step I will introduce a schema conflict. In the second step I will write schema synchronization instructions. In the third step, I will synchronize the schema. In the fourth step, I'll write data upgrade code. And in the fifth and final step, I will deploy the customized table to production. So, let's move to the first step and introduce a schema conflict. My customer has given me a new requirement. They want to manage the combined shipments functionality so that the shipments are not just combined or not combined, but that they can be combined depending on uh, if the shipments are for the same responsibility center or also for the same location. Therefore, I need to customize my table 18 customer. So I will design this table and I will find the combined shipments field. It's there. It's currently Boolean, so I will change it to Option. And then I will add Always, Responsibility Center, Location, and Never. And of course, I will attempt to save this table. Now Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2015 asks me how do I want to handle uh, this schema synchronization. Do I want to validate it now? Do I want to validate it later? Or do I just want to force the, uh, force the new schema, which would lose any conflicting data? I never want to do this. I will try to validate the schema changes uh, and I will try to validate them now. So I'm clicking OK. However, the schema synchronization has resul uh, resulted in an error because uh, in this uh, field, combined shipments, uh, where I'm attempting to change the data type, there is data already. So I must somehow handle that data before I can synchronize the schema. So I will have to write some code to handle that. Now that we have seen that a table cannot just be saved, let's write some schema synchronization instructions. Since I do not to lose any data from my customer from their production table, uh, I would have to ensure that any data is temporarily copied from the customer table into an upgrade customer table. Uh, however, since I'm not changing all of the fields, I will only move those fields which are relevant. So this is the combined shipments field and the number field. I will copy those fields, I will close the table designer and I will create a new table. Uh, I will paste those two fields here. We'll make sure that I don't have any unnecessary properties. And then I will save this table as 99,900 and I'll give it the name of upgrade customer. I have some residue code from earlier which I do not need. So I will delete that code and I will try to save the table again. And now the table is successfully saved. In earlier versions of NAV, uh, I would now have to write code which copies for each customer the value of the combined shipments field and moves it, actually takes it from the customer table, stores it in the upgrade customer table and then empties uh, the same field in the customer table. However, in NAV 2015, I don't have to do that. What I need to do is to write a table sync setup function. I'll start by creating a new code unit. I will save this code unit as 9900 9, upgrade customer and then I will set the code unit property, the subtype property to upgrade. This is the new subtype in NAV 2015. 
and then I'm going to create a new function. I'm going going to call it set table sync setup 18 customer, and I'm setting the property, the function type property, to table sync setup. So the table sync setup function is a function that is called by NAV automatically whenever you are saving a new table definition. Uh, Microsoft Dynamics NAV pulls all of the upgrade functions and tries to locate uh, a table sync setup ta uh, function which instructs it how to handle the uh, this specific table. So uh, I have set um, I've set the function property and now I'm going to define the parameters. Here I have uh, I'm receiving one parameter which is the table sync setup record of type table synchronization setup. So this is a new table in NAV 2015. It's actually a virtual table uh, which you use during this table, uh, table synchronization process. The code in this set table sync setup function that I've just created should instruct by using this table sync setup record how to synchronize the schema. It has three fields. First is table ID which is the table that I'm synchronizing. The second is the upgrade table ID. This is the ID of the table where I will copy or move the data during this table synchronization process. And the third parameter is mode, uh, where I can specify how I'm uh, synchronizing the schema. So uh, instead of writing to this table manually, I can invoke an existing code unit, which is the data upgrade management. So it's code unit, data upgrade management and it has this set table sync setup function which again receives the table id upgrade table id and table upgrade mode so i'm calling this function i'm passing the id for the customer table the id of the upgrade customer table and i'm passing the synchronization mode. There are four synchronization modes. The first mode is the check mode. Uh, with this mode, uh, the NAV will simply check if there is any data that uh, that would cause schema synchronization conflict. And if there is such data, it would just notify you so that you know that uh, something needs to be done. The second mode is copy. In this mode, you, uh, you are copying the data from n columns which cause the schema, uh, schema synchronization conflict from the original table into the new table. Any other columns are ignored. Uh, the move option requires that the upgrade table is exactly equal to the original table and then it simply moves all of the columns and all of the data from the original table into the new table. And finally the last one is force which simply overrides the table in, uh, in the SQL Server with losing any kind of data that might exist in those columns already. So obviously for my example I'm going to use the copy mode and I'm now ready to, to save my upgrade customer code unit. Now that we have instructed NAV how to handle schema conflicts let's synchronize the schema. Let's go back to the customer table. So I'm going to table 18 customer will find this combine shipments field and I'm going to specify the data type of option and then I'm going to set the option string properties to always responsibility center location never at this stage when I call file and then save um, if I call uh, if I compile and save this table with the now with validation option NAV goes through all of the upgrade code units and pulls the table sync setup functions uh, and then if there is a table sync setup function which affects uh, the table customer or which specifies the sy synchronization options uh, for, the, for the customer table then um, the synchronization process will execute that logic which was specified in the, in the sync setup mode. Uh, in the sync setup table. Since I've specified the mode of copy, it will uh, copy the number and the combined shipment field values from the original table into the upgrade table and then apply the schema synchronization. So I'll click OK. At this stage schema synchronization executes and if I take a look at what has happened, 
um, I can go to my 99900 table upgrade customer I can run this table and I can see that it has all of the values for the primary key and for the combined shipments actually the original values from those fields I can also go back to my customer table run it and take a look at the combined shipment field and see that it has been applied the change has been applied and basically all of those fields are at their default value. Now that we have moved any conflicting data out of our um, uh, original uh, customer table, we are ready to write the data upgrade code which will move the data back. Writing the upgrade code is very simple. It uh, basically does not differ at all from, uh, from how you would write the upgrade code in the earlier versions of NAV for the upgrade projects. So I will start by creating a new function. I will call it upgrade 18 customer combine shipments. You can see that the table automatically receives this upgrade uh, subtype, uh, th sorry, the, the function receives the upgrade subtype. So here I will write the upgrade code. I will have two variables, customer and upgrade. Customer, customer will be table 18, upgrade customer will be 99900. Here I will write the logic, so if upgrade customer finds that then repeat until upgrade customer next is zero. So uh, this in this loop I'm iterating through all of the records in my upgrade table and then I'm trying to get the customer by the same ID. I will first by default set combined shipments to never and then if upgrade customer combine shipments then case true off so here I will check certain conditions for example if the customer has location code then I'm setting combine shipments to location option If uh, the customer has responsibility center, then I'm setting uh, combined shipments to responsibility center option. And if none of these two conditions are satisfied, then I'm setting it to always. And finally, I will call customer modify to save the change to the customer table. I'm now saving my upgrade code unit and now I'm going to execute the upgrade process. This is a new option in NAV 2015. There are several ways how I can invoke it. One of them is uh, directly from tools data upgrade in uh, my uh, development environment. So here I will click start. Uh, when you click start or when you st uh, start the upgrade process anyhow, for example through PowerShell, what happens is that NAV goes through all of the upgrade code units and executes all of the upgrade functions in those code units. So when I click start, it will actually execute this uh, upgrade customer uh, function that I've just written. So I will click yes. It asks me about the execution mode. Here I can specify whether I want to execute it in parallel or serial. If I have multiple tables that I want to synchronize, then running them in a parallel execution mode saves time because it executes multiple functions uh, simultaneously. So uh, I will simply click OK to start execu executing this process because I only have one table. So here I will get the data upgrade dialog, it tells me that it is in progress and now it tells me that it has completed. So I will close this table, um, this dialog and then I will verify the changes in my customer table. So I'm running the table and again I'm going to find my combined shipments column. So here it is and obviously it has applied the business logic during the upgrade process by setting the combined shipments value to location, always, 
or responsible, uh, responsibility center depending on the conditions that I have specified. So the upgrade process is now completed. Now that we have seen how data upgrade the process works, we are ready to deploy the customized table uh, to production. I will first export any objects that I have modified, so I'm filtering on the modified flag. I'm showing all the objects and then I will go to File, Export and then I will enter Upgrade Customer. So I have three objects in my FOP file now. Next step is uh, I'm going into production environment, so I'm going to File Database Open. I'm opening the production database. And I will import my fob. So it's upgrade customer. I'll click open. It tells me that uh, there are no object conflicts, so I will just click yes to import the FOB. Here it asks me how to handle the schema synchronization. Now this option that I specify applies to all of the tables in my, uh, in my object file. So if I click OK, it will apply, uh, it will um, execute the same logic that, I, that has been executed when I've, I've been designing the table. So it will call the table sync setup function uh, for any of the tables which are involved. So I'll click OK. Um, and now it tells me that it's going to perform this validation changes and synchronize them with, this, uh, with the SQL Server tables. So if I click yes, it will execute my table sync setup function for the customer table. So I'll click yes. It tells me that the operational sync is in progress. Now it tells me that it's performing the synchronization and it's now operational. So if I take a look and design my customer table, I can see that combined shipments field is set to option. My next step is of course to run the tools data upgrade, start the data upgrade process. And then when it completes, I can verify by running the, the table that also in my production environment I have properly upgrade this field by applying the data from the, the uh, from the upgrade table and the business logic written in the upgrade code unit. So again, it's the logic correctly applied. So you have seen how you can synchronize schema conflicts in five steps using upgrade code units in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2015. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you will put this new knowledge to daily use soon. I'm looking forward to see you in another How Do I video for Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2015. Have a great day!